Hello from the Music Interview Corner. I am here with Ego Kills with Janne and Wilho. Hi. Hello, hello, I'm Wilho. Hi, I'm Janne. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yes, and so nice to meet you guys. And thank you for taking time for the interview. No, thank of you. Of course, of course. Thank you. And we have to explain. I, yeah, I also wear something special for you today. This is a Midsummer Crown. This is the one I made for my best friend, but I'm allowed to wear it today. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's, thank you. Yeah. I felt it was uh, the only right thing to wear for this interview. Uh, indeed. You, we love flowers. There was, a, there was a flower in the cover of our first album. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it's been a thing for us. And you're making hippie metal. And you're probably the first ever hippie metal band that I met. Are there other hippie metal bands or did you invent this genre? Not that we know of. Like, we didn't invent the whole world, but like, we are a hippie metal band. Like, yeah. We are hippies, we play metal. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. We didn't invent that word or that concept. It, it came from someone else. Mm -hmm. But uh, at least I haven't heard of anybody else having the same kind of same kind of concept but it's better to be leaders than followers that's true but you kind of invented this special music style because i haven't heard anything like it before yeah well uh, it's it's like a huge mix of different influences there are five people in the band and we have diverse tastes in music and uh four people writing songs so so it's it's a pretty wide scale of of stuff <laughs> do you want to add anything No, I, I, I think that was like everything that needed to be said about that. You know? <laughs> I read something about uh, a Mellowhead movement yeah. on your website, and Mellowhead was also the title of your second album. Can you tell us more about that, like about the Mellowhead movement? Yeah, the, the Mellowhead, that was the title of our second album, and uh, the song is our most popular song. So... Uh, It, it just sounded nice, you know, that, you know, following Ego Kills is kind of, you know, joining the Mellowhead movement. It's like, you know, many bands have these things they're called their, their, their fans, like uh, In Flames has gesture heads and, and, you know, Machine Head has head cases and, and, and stuff like this. So we thought that, okay, Ego Kills has Mellowheads, you know, that's, that's like our, our thing. And so by following Ego Kills and listening to our music, you, you are a Mellowhead and hence you join the Mellowhead movement. I think I felt very mellow when I listened to your music, like in a good way, like very deeply relaxed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's the point. Like, I guess we are like mellow heads also, so it's reflection on our, on, on our music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can we talk about your band name? Because Ego Kills, it sounds like egoless. Is there a special story that connects to all these spiritual hippie philosophies? It does, but like... The band name came from, we didn't have a like name for the band, and we were like, we, we had a gig coming up, so we needed to have like, a, yeah, the classic stuff. And we had a song called Kill Your Ego, and we were like just wondering about the names, and then we decided, hey, what about Kill Your Ego? And it, it also has that hippie stuff, you know, like ego killing it, and ego being like bad thing, you know, like, and try to get rid of it. Yeah, but, but I don't know how it came to be that we turned it around to, to become Ego Kills. But I, I like it because it's the sentence, like, Ego Kills. But then it, it can also be like a noun, like Ego Kills, like, like as if Ego Kill is a thing. So yeah. Ego Kills in plural, <laughs> you know. The, yeah, it's like not roadkill, but Ego Kill. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of this, this play on words that I... That I like, and you know, it's it looks good, it sounds good. I think it's a pretty pretty descriptive name for our band too. And you can interpret all kinds of philosophical stuff into this name. Indeed, so yeah, we have a lots of like these, you know, philosophic inner self kind of perceptions in our lyrics, and and of course, it's not all just like peace and love and happiness it's it's also like the darker sides of things but it's it's very much about balance at least for me you know it's you have your darker moments but you also have your like better moments and you try to find some kind of a balance there mm -hmm. do you want to add anything no <laughs> <laughs> when you talked about the balance of light and darkness i just thought about the finnish winter and the finnish summer for some reason yeah well 
that's a very good metaphor. Like it, it, it works. Like I haven't thought about that, but but yeah, I I like the balance of different seasons, and and you know maybe it it, it has got some metaphorical dimensions in our music as well. Maybe we have winter songs and summer songs. <laughs> yeah. yeah, most of our songs are, like, are the winter songs, I guess, on this new album. But there's some, some few summer songs also, like Life's a Party. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to talk about that. Life's a Party. I love the music video. Because you're like basically partying and you have this T-shirt that says Addicted to Party, this top. Where did you get that or did you make it yourself? Uh, I, I bought it from some holiday trip. I guess it was in... Greece, I guess, yeah. I just saw it on some like small shop, and I, I oh, I need to get that shirt, you know. <laughs> and 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 when I bought it, I knew what I, I would wear it someday on some music video, just because like. It's like the perfect fit for that video. Yeah, it was. Yeah. <laughs> who had the idea for this video? Because we have to explain. Uh, we will also link the video, but you are basically having a hippie bus in the middle of nowhere, and you are playing like really wild hippie metal. Uh, who had the idea for this video concept, and where did you film it? Uh, I guess the idea from the start came from me because I was watching Trailer Park Boys, <laughs> <laughs> and I and and I thought that we need to make a video like Trailer Park Boys, and. It started from that. Yeah. And, and th then we, he presented the idea to, to the producer and, and director, Timo Lepista, who, uh, you know, it, it was just like we throw the, threw the ball to him and he started developing the story and the yeah. concept around it. And of course, we had the camper van, which we have actually done two tours with yeah. also. So, you know, it's the, called Mellow Mobile. Yeah. It's Mellow Mobile in the video. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, so then it just sort of naturally, or he, he wrote it and, and sent us some kind of synopsis of the video. And we were like, yeah, this looks good. Let's, let's see, let's see how it turns out. And we, we filmed it. In Tampere, our hometown, actually not far from our rehearsal place, so so it was a logistically very very easy thing to do. And did you drive there with the Mellow Mobile? Yes, we did, and we also drive away from there. And there there is this funny story about you know when we left the set, we had filmed everything, and we were like tired but happy that okay the video is going to be really good. And then we were driving home, me and the bassist, and. Uh, in Tampere and all of a sudden it, it started to rumble a little, little bit and then the left rear tire flew off in a tunnel in Tampere completely so it was like I, I managed to steer it like safely uh, on the side of the road but it was it was like a really surreal moment after that kind of a day like <laughs> like filming this crazy Uh, video. Oh my god, then the video would have been your legacy if you would have died. But I'm so glad that you kind of saved both of your lives yeah. last minute. That that would have been the ultimate final shot for the video, like, you know, seeing that car crash and, you know... <laughs> Burning in the tunnel. Oh no, better not. <laughs> no, I'm so glad that you made it out alive. Yeah, yeah, but it was it was a surreal moment. But the video turned out great, so it was worth it, even though, you know, we had to we had to call the tow truck to, to, to get the get the car away from the tunnel and ah it was it was a you know it required a little bit of emotional work at that moment <laughs> did you meditate or something like that afterwards yeah maybe i did but uh, the bassist uh probably opened a beer you know that works better for him yeah the two things to get your balance back like meditation yes. and alcohol here in yes, finland exactly exactly <laughs> And can I ask you guys, uh, were any of you or your bandmates uh, raised by hippie parents? Well, not by hippie parents, but like my mother was like into all kinds of new age stuff at some point. Like I, she read me some tarot cards and stuff like that when I was a little kid. And we had like lots of uh, hippie guests in our house when I was a little because... I grew up in Hämeenkyrö, a small village in Finland, and there's like this. Mikä tämä on? 
really conservative kind of. Story. Yeah, but there's also like this um, kehakukka. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, coffee. Yeah, like a coffee, coffee shop, like a, like organic yeah. food kind of restaurants yeah. and coffee shop. Yeah, yeah. And, and those people like were lots of visiting us when I was a little kid. So there's like there was some new age stuff over there, but like not much. So that's where the inspiration came from. The inspiration for the hippie part of the hippie metal? No, not, no. I guess it, it, it evolved later, like having some crisis in life and oh. starting to look for answers in life, you know. <laughs> hippie, hippie metal was the answer? Yeah. Well, it was, you know, like I found some inner, inner peace and maybe some spiritual stuff, you know, like and wanted to like bring it to music, you know, like. I don't know. <laughs> Do you want to add anything to that? Uh, well, I maybe my mother too. You know, she passed away when I was seven. Oh, so I'm so sorry. Well, it's it's been a while. Uh, I've already uh, overcome that loss. But maybe she had lived in in the United States in the 60s and 70s. So maybe she might have had some kind of like hippie connections there but I'm, I'm not really sure but at least I didn't have a very uh, strict upbringing so more like a free as a bird kind of thing you know so so maybe it was like finding my own way and and, and it has come here now <laughs> Your third studio album is self-titled. It's called Ego Kills, and it's going to come out on September 8th. How was the recording process? Well, it, it was... Uh, no, it went fine, I guess. It, it was long, <laughs> long, yeah. It took, okay. took a while. We made it like in... In parts. In parts, yeah. yeah. We did first two songs in 2019, then another pair of songs in 2020 and then the last six songs last year so it was like this long process and trying different studios different producers and then like yeah, coming up with this this thing finally but yeah it, to me it's like a very very nice and diverse collection of of songs and and, and good strong songs too Do you have a favorite song on Ego Kills? From all the songs? Yes. For, for the new album? Oh, you can say both. You can say from the new album and also from all your songs. Interesting for the fans, probably. Ooh, well, I don't know. Uh, Mellowhead has like a special meaning to me, like some weird way. <laughs> and for you? Well... From the new album, I'd say I'm, I'm really proud of Grey Rainbows because that's something that we, we haven't done before. It's like a completely new territory for us. And I, I'm really proud of how it, how it turned out, that, that we are able to express ourselves in, in that kind of vibe too. It's, it it it's really makes me proud. And what was the inspiration for Grey Rainbows? Well, the bass riff. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It was uh, Mika, our bassist, wrote the bass riff, and, and the whole song revolves around and circles around the same bass riff. Like, oh, it's actually a chord progression, but yeah, but, but it's, a, it's the same chord pro progression the whole time. Like, it doesn't change at all. It's like, yeah. yeah it's so, like the whole song revolves like a big gray rainbow around that riff yeah exactly yeah. yeah that's that that's how it goes when we put this band together i never thought that we would play that kind of stuff but i like to be surprised like that <laughs> i bet your fans will be surprised too by that song i'm sure do you want to add anything to the album mm, yeah i like gray gray rainbows it's 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 a different and beautiful song i think yeah And you were on a big tour, like a total cost tour, and it ended in May. And how was that? 
Yeah, well, it, it wasn't that much of a big tour. It was three shows. Oh, oh, okay. But you made it look big on Instagram. Yeah, of course. You you have to make everything look bigger than it actually. Yeah, that's how social media works, of course. Exactly. Exactly. You have to take a picture after this for Instagram. I'm going to make it really big. That's that's <laughs> that's that, that's exactly the way to go. But yeah, it was a really nice thing because we hadn't uh, we hadn't even played any any shows for for some years before last February when we had the Life's a Party single release party in Tampere. But then in May we had this total cost tour with uh, Atlases and Black Royal. Both are amazing bands. And it was really, it exceeded all my expectations. It was really much nicer than, than I, I thought that it was going to be like really, really underground, really like not too many people and all that. But there were actually quite a lot of people and and they were really into and they bought merch and 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 really seemed to like us so it was a great thing and the most important thing for us of course is to to get to play abroad outside finland you know that's that's been our goal ever since the beginning so this was another chapter in that so that that means a lot to us everything or do you want to add something? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, but I have to ask you, that's my favorite question because it brings up interesting stories. What is the craziest thing you and your bandmates have ever done on tour? Ever done on tour? Craziest, funniest? Uh, Most hippie thing, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Well, uh, I think it's crazy enough like just that we travel with the mellow Mobile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely. After the tunnel story, I totally yeah. believe that. Well, that that was, uh, you know, when that tire flew off, I never thought that the same car would take us on tour again. But it did. Oh, you did. Oh, yeah. Wow, you never give up on the Mellow Mobile. Yeah, exactly. So that was pretty amazing. But I don't know crazy stuff. But we we do pretty boring stuff on tour. You know, maybe we go to to a spa. Uh, oh, that's that not is, that's not very crazy. That's very hippie hippie yeah. style. Well, one of the craziest things was when Nico, our guitarist, broke his wrist in France oh, in in 2018. That oh, that yeah. was that was that was a pretty crazy thing. Did you have to end the tour then? No, we had to skip one show. Yeah, we had to oh. cancel the show on the in Paris. Yeah. And then yeah. he played with a broken wrist afterwards. Yeah. Oh, better. Uh, yeah, he played the rest of the tour with a broken hand yeah, yeah he, he had some kind of uh, of a wrist support he, he went to see a doctor and and told them that i'm a working musician and i'm on tour and i need to get this wrist fixed <laughs> and then they gave him this some kind of a support and he was able to finish the tour but it it was it was pretty emotional because we weren't sure that if he's able to continue but then luckily he was but but yeah But touring as a thing itself is pretty crazy already. So, so I don't know. We just, you know, after all these these incidents we've had, uh, we just try to keep things like safe and ourselves healthy and able to play. You know, there's not much time for any, or not not much room for any any crazy really wacky stuff because you know we we want to be fit for the shows of course <laughs> like how, how did he break his wrist if you want to talk about that uh, yeah he tripped we were in louvre, louvre. yes yeah louvre. yeah we were like sightseeing was he so much admiring the art that he didn't look where he was walking well i know he he was admiring something but <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what he was ad admiring, but but anyway, he didn't look, you know, to where he was walking, and there was this chain, and then he just oh, no. tripped. Did he fell into some expensive art piece? No, no, no. just like face down to the ground, you know. Like. <laughs> oh, no. But I'm glad he's okay now. Yeah, he's yeah, okay he's now. Okay. It, yeah, it was a long time ago, but but yeah, that that remains one of the most surreal and emotional days in my life you know when we were thinking that okay you know are we leaving home <laughs> or do we continue and we were me and Janne were sitting in in uh, our well that wasn't a, ex exactly the mellow mobile we had a little bit of a fancier camper van a, a, at that tour but anyway we were sitting there in Lyon and uh, 
just waiting for Nico to send us some news from the doctor and coming back that, okay, are you able to continue? Then finally, when he came, he said, yes, we are continuing. It was, a, it, it was emotional. I wanted to talk to you about one of your music videos. You have this, it's a bit older, but you have this amazing animated music video for Nibiru. Yeah. What was the inspiration for the song and for the video? Um, I guess the inspiration for the song was back to that hippie stuff, you know, like, and, and the planet Nibiru. And people still believe that Nibiru is like going to hit Earth at some point. There are still people out there who believe that. And yeah. It's going on. It's still, it's, <laughs> yeah, no, but it's coming around. And I think, when was it like half a year ago, it like missed Earth like by a little bit, I heard? Yeah, yeah, I've heard the same. And I know it's coming back. Like. <laughs> so we still have a chance for Nibiru. Yeah, yeah. of course. <laughs> yeah. and, and the video was just like, you know, we have always had this idea that we want to have an animated music video and then I just uh, there was this guy on Instagram who contacted us that hey I do animation that if you're ever interested that hit me up and uh, American guy his name was Jaron Johnson I believe and so I, I I wrote him back and he was like okay I can do it and it it turned out pretty cool you know yes, yeah and and we 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 wrote some kind of a storyline for him But mostly he figured it, figured it out himself, and it's it's a really nice video. And I like, of course, the Nibiru is the planet, but but there's also a very metaphoric kind of dimension to the to the song and to the lyrics that it, it you know it can be something that you are expecting or dreading or both, and and you know it never you know it's like waiting for something that never happens, but you always just expect it to happen it's it's you know it has this kind of forever ongoing thing do you have anything to add to nibiru no not not nothing but it's coming <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See, it, wait no yeah. no <laughs> looks like it i was first when i watched the video it reminded me a lot oh, yes oh my god <laughs> Guys, maybe this is the last thing you'll ever see. It's going to be like found footage after Nibiru hit. But yeah. it's a question who's going to find it. <laughs> yeah, say your prayers. Oh, yes. When I saw the Nibiru video, I first thought of the old Beatles videos, the animated ones, like, like Yellow Submarine, like the style of the record covers. And I also thought of the Netflix show Midnight Gospel. Do you know that one, the Midnight Gospel? Because I first wanted... Podcast stuff yes, like exactly. Yeah. First, I thought I should ask you if your video was inspired by the Midnight Gospel, but then I realized your video was published three years before the Midnight Gospel yeah. show came out. Do you think the Midnight Gospel show was inspired by your music video? Maybe. Most definitely. <laughs> yeah, and we should probably sue them, you know. Oh, yeah. They have stole our ideas. Yeah. Yes, we should sue them fast before Nibiru hits, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we still have time. Not much, but we just a little bit. Yeah. Do you want to say something to your fans before Nibiru hits? Mm, have fun, stay safe, enjoy life. <laughs> And you never know what's going to happen next. You know, you might wake up in some kind of a new dimension. Yeah. Like when Nibiru hits or the big solar flash or something like that? Yeah, it's like... Yeah, you transform into like the next dimensional being. Oh, wow, yes. <laughs> like which dimension would that be? The fifth or...? I don't know. You have to ask some smarter, but I guess are we like now in 3D or 4D? I don't know. I think we're 3D as far as I know, but yeah. some say it's 4D already. Yeah, maybe we are going to 4D, I think, guess. N not yeah, sure. Transforming. Yeah, not sure, but it's <laughs> it. Th th there are going to be a lot of different dimensions. I know that. Do you believe in the multiverse? Very much so. Yes. Uh, at least I'm, I know that I have several versions of 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 myself in different different uh, universes. Fascinating. Are they all musicians? Uh, not likely. You know. There's probably this postman, accountant, and <laughs> Ast astronaut. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, hopefully, but I hope they are all nice guys. I'm pretty sure they are. Yeah, yeah, I hope so too. Do you want to add anything to the multiverse? No, I, I guess 
everything is said about them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then thank you so much for the interview, Wilho and Janne. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much for having us. It means the world to us. Oh, thank you. I really enjoyed this. Yeah. And goodbye from the music interview corner. Yes. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God, what's that?